Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. As some of you might already know, next week there will be another great tournament in Lisbon, held by the CDH Portuguese League. And today we have with us two winners from previous tournaments from the Portuguese League, João and Tiago, whose matches you can see in the top corner or in the description below. Rodrigo is kicking it old school by bringing a Team Nasakashima stacks list with so much ETB hate that he actually had to cut Oracle for Labman. Ball dialed back to his Orvar clone master list. Tiago brought his Eason list based on Shapers, Wonder Song and Physics Bard Rock Cafe. And Drown is piloting Wait for Godo from G Toast 99 and insert clever phrase here, with a couple of card changes. Rodrigo is going first and Imulgan once, finding a Command Tower, Island and Ottawara Soaring City for lands. Judge Familiar is a force spike that can draw cards with Timna. Hushbringer is great against Godo and some of his son's creatures. Cathar Commando is a disenchant on a stick, also able to draw cards from Timna, and Deadly Rollock is decent removal. Ball had the mulligan down to 5, keeping a snow covered island and polluted delta for lands, with a prismatic lands for ramp. Wim of Volra is the combo piece in Orvar, and Baral already helps reduce its cost. He sent Isochron Scepter and Archmage Emeritus to the bottom. Tiago mulligan once and found two snow covered forests, with a wild growth and Finorn Hells for ramp. Manglehorn is good removal and great hate piece versus dockside loops. Worldly Tutor and Natural Order are good tutors to find him some needed creatures to combo or maybe react to the table. Last but not least, Jean kept his first hand, and quite a good one, a lucky gemstone cavern starting the game in play with the Dwarven Ruins for added mana. Vital Flame and Jeska's Wheel are great rituals, especially if he goes for them early to cast the Imperial Recruiter to try to find Treasonous Ogre and win from there. Moon Silver Key can find him Jeweled Lotus or maybe a Mana Crypt for the extra ramp, and Trinisphere is a good stacks piece in his deck that wants to count to 11. Ready for this match? Before the game starts, João announces his luck with the Gemstone Caverns, putting it into play and exiling Trinisphere. Rodrigo then starts his turn with the Command Tower and casts a Judge Familiar. Baltop decks quite well, he plays a Snow Covered Island and casts the Drawn Mana Vault, shipping the turn. Tiago plays a Snow Covered Forest and casts a Wild Growth on it. João also drew quite well, he plays a tapped Dwarven Ruins and suddenly the pesky Judge Familiar stops his attempt at winning this precise turn, so he simply casts the top decked Sol Ring and follows it with Moon Silver Key, finishing the turn. Rodrigo maintains the trend of good top decks, he plays an island and casts a Mana Crypt, and with it he casts his Hush Bringer, shattering João's dreams of winning in his next turn. He still attacks him with a Familiar, considering life is a resource in Godo for Treasonous Ogre and passes. Ball plays a Polluted Delta, and fearing an early collector oof from Isan, he casts his commander Orvar right away and passes the turn. Tiago plays another Snow Covered Forest and casts a Destiny Spinner, which resolves, so he casts a Finorn Elves and passes the turn. John draws, but after some thinking, he is forced to pass, as Ashbringer denies Godo of its ETB. Rodrigo untaps and wins his Crypt Roll. He draws no lands, but still prefers to keep his Ottawara to himself. He attacks Tiago and Drown with the Flyers, considering Tiago can still find Sylvan Library and use his life as a resource as well. He then passes fully untapped. Ball draws and takes one from the vault. He cracks his delta for a snow covered island and then casts a prismatic lens, since he's failing to draw lands. He considers attacks and Rodrigo hints at having stuff up his sleeve, so he sends Orvar towards Drown and passes. Tiago is also failing to find lands, so he casts his commander, Isan, the Wonder Bard. After that, he still casts a Heap Doll, just in case any of his opponents want to do some graveyard shenanigans. During Ball's Polluted Delta fetch, the table spoke about Rodrigo having an opposition agent at hand, which deters João from cracking his Moon Silver Key now, and he simply goes to his turn. He plays his Snow Covered Mountain and simply passes. In his end step, however, Rodrigo flashes in a Cathar Commando, and João uses this window to crack his Moon Silver Key just to be safe, and finds a Cursed Mirror to keep his options open, since he still needs to fight his way past the Hushbringer. Rodrigo rolls and takes 3 from the crypt. He's still out of extra black or white mana to cast Timna, so he attacks without her, sending the commando at Drone and the flyers towards Tiago. Rodrigo still ponders to bring his Sakashima as an extra hush bringer, just to be safer towards an end of turn removal from João and getting his deadly relic online as well, but he decides to pass. Ball draws and takes 1 from the vault. He casts a Sapphire Medallion and follows it with a Baral, Chief of Compliance, and passes without attacking. Tiago also fails to draw a land, he casts an Allosaurus Shepherd and still fears that hypothetical opposition agent, so he simply passes. John starts his turn with a Rite of Flame and Rodrigo responds right away with a mental misstep. With his options limited, he does fire his Imperial Recruiter as a mirror blocker and passes the turn. Rodrigo rolls and is safe from his script. He finally found his desired land, a Tundra. With it, he casts his Timna the Weaver and proceeds right into combat, 
sending the flyers towards João and Tiago and Cathar Commando towards Ball, so no one blocks. His team triggers and he pays 3 lives to draw 3 cards. With his hand now full, he passes the turn. Ball draws and takes one from the vault, still no lands to be found, so he passes. In his end step, however, Tiago activates his Hisan with one verse counter and he finds the mana dork that has him the most mana, Arbor Elf. He gets to his turn and not only finds a land, but a good one, a Mouth of Ronom. He then adds double green with his Enchanted Forest and untaps it with his Arbor Elf to be able to cast a Natural Order by sacrificing his Destiny Spinner. The table ponders on what's to come, but no one actually anticipated the Seedborn Muse. He then activates Isan with the second verse counter, and Rodrigo responds to it with a deadly relic, targeting the Seedborn Muse. Since Tiago now knows he lost the Muse, Ball fears an incoming oof, so he now responds to it with a Whim of Volrath with buyback, targeting one of his snow covered islands. And due to its cost reduction of 2, the whole spell's cost is only 1, and without any responses, he loops the spell an arbitrarily large amount of times to get infinite islands. He ends up the loop with the last created island untapped and with the spell in his hand. Before Tiago now ponders deeply on his choices, and Oof is not one of them, as he now needs João and Rodrigo in the game to help stop Bal from winning with whatever he might have. With no great options though, he goes for a Priest of Titania to help him ramp his next turn. We're back to João. He plays his snow covered mountain and casts his cursed mirror, entering as a copy of Baral. He then cracks his Dwarven Ruins for double red and still floats some more mana to cast his Jeska's Will, targeting Rodrigo, who has 6 cards in hand. With a total of 8 red mana, he casts a Wheel of Fortune, trying to find answers, mostly for Hushbringer and hoping Rodrigo can maybe find something to deal with Baal. Everyone draws 7 and then he follows it with a Gamble, tutoring for a Wheel of Misfortune and randomly discarding a Magnetic Theft, so he proceeds to cast the Wheel of Misfortune. It resolves and everyone shows their votes, and John loses 11 life, and Baal was the only one voting 0, happy with his hand. John is really sad as most of his drawn cards are lands. He casts a mana crypt and is forced to pass. Rodrigo untaps and rolls for the crypt, being slapped once again. He does ask if anyone would be willing to let Timna go through for an extra card, and the crickets come forward. He sends the judge familiar towards the judge, Hushbringer towards Tiago, and Timna towards João, who does block her. In his second main phase, Timna triggers and Rodrigo pays 2 life to draw 2 cards. He plays an Underground Sea and casts a Mox Diamond, discarding a Polluted Delta. He follows it with his Stormscape Familiar, and Baal does respond with a Spell Snare, since it's a narrow spell and can mess with Rodrigo's mana count. This way, Rodrigo proceeds with a Dark Confident and finishes the turn with a Rule of Law, to much of Baal's sadness. Baal untaps his Infinite Islands and the game crap. And now for something completely different. Did you know you could get some of these cool playmats through Patreon? Well, now you can get some of these cool looking deck boxes to fill all your commander needs. Custom made with different colors and motifs designed specially to your needs, and shipped to your door worldwide. Available on Patreon. You help the show and the deck box helps you maintain your cards fit to play. Let's get back to the game. Balden uses 4 islands from the bajillion he has to untap his mana vault. He plays his Calling Tarn and then casts a Sol the Equation to look for a Cyclonic Rift, and without any possible spells to cast, he passes. As it turns out, having infinite islands isn't quite enough to win the game, and they said island is the best card in Magic? Well... Tiago plays an Emergence Zone and tells the table he's going to force the Rift, by casting Staff of Domination. With Priest of Titania tapping for 5 mana, he can generate infinite mana and draw his entire library, so Baal is forced to cast his Cyclonic Rift overloaded. In response, Tiago floats 5 and untaps his force with his Arbor Elf. The staff then resolves and he proceeds to dump back his hand, with Allosaurus Shepherd first, then Findorn Elves, followed by Elvish Mystic and then Priest of Titania. He still casts an Elvish Reclaimer and goes ahead with Arbor Elf. Without any other good plays, he casts his Isan and finishes his turn. João draws yet another land and he plays a Cavern of Souls, entering and naming Human. He then casts Mana Crypt and still casts his Soul Ring and then proceeds with his Cursed Mirror, that could enter as a copy of Priest of Titania, so Ball responds with a Suspend, targeting Priest of Titania, denying him the mana to cast an Uncounterable Godo, as well as equip him. This way, he has the Mirror enter as a copy of Orvar, and he attacks Ball with him to pay his respects before passing. Rodrigo untaps, and on his upkeep, Ball fires a Dream's Grip, entwined, choosing to tap Rodrigo's Command Tower and untap his own Scalding Tarn, triggering Orvar to create a copy of his Scalding Tarn. Rodrigo taps his land in response, but decides not to use the mana. Rodrigo draws and casts Mana Crypt. He follows it with a Mox Diamond, discarding a Plains. 
He then casts his Hushbringer and Ball responds to it with a Snapcaster Mage, entering and triggering to give Spell Snare flashback until end of turn, which he casts towards Hushbringer, countering it and triggering Varal to loot. Ball even reveals his top deck Spellseeker, discarding a Jewel Lotus. Rodrigo then casts his Judge Familiar and finishes the turn with his Rule of Law. In his end step, however, Ball cracks one of his Calling Tarns to get a Mystic Sanctuary, triggering its ETB and putting Cyclonic Rift on top of his library. Ball draws and starts by firing his overloaded Cyclonic Rift once again. Jean floats mana off of his rocks and Rodrigo sacrifices the board as is familiar so Ball needs to tap one more of his infinite islands. He then casts his Spellseeker and searches up Mind Games to his hand. He casts Mind Games with buyback targeting his Mystic Sanctuary, triggering Orvar and creating a copy of it, triggering it and putting Capsize on top of his deck. He then casts Narset, Partner of Veils, and activates her to get his Capsize into his hand. He then tries to capsize all his opponent's permanents back to their hands with his infinite islands, and in response, Jean casts a Mind Collapse targeting Narset. In response, however, Ball casts Mind Games with buyback targeting his Snapcaster Mage, triggering Orvar and getting a copy of Snapcaster, triggering and targeting Wim of Allwrath to gain flashback. He casts it targeting the Narset, triggering Orvar and creating a copy of Narset, and he puts the original one, targeted by Mind Collapse, in the graveyard as a state-based action. Ball's intention was to cast Windfall and generate infinite snapcasters and pass the turn, but he had recently taken Windfall out of his deck, so he goes for a different line. He can activate his Narset once and find a non-creature non-land card to put into his hand, and use Capsize on her, triggering Orvar and creating a copy which he can activate once again, until he's able to dig through his library for Isochron Scepter and Dramatic Reversal, to generate infinite mana through his rocks. He proceeds digging with the copied Narsets until he finds Wings of Rebuke, and then when he activates Isochron Scepter he responds with Mind Games targeting it, triggering Orvar for a copy, which enters and he brings the Wings of Rebuke. This way he is able to activate the copied Isochron Scepter to cast Wings of Rebuke on one of his Snapcaster Mages, triggering Orvar for a copy and making everyone mill two cards. This way he mills everyone and simply passes the turn and his opponents lose as they attempt to draw from an empty library. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match everyone! The stacks deck going first effectively slowed down each player equally, and Hushbringer not only stopped Godo but also Isan and Orvar. The whole table forgot Rodrigo could have potentially stop Ball's infinite lands loop, and had any of the players thought about it, there could be a workaround targeting Sapphire Medallion first, and the game would eventually end in the same outcome, so don't be harsh in the comments below. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Drunken Housecat, V, RJ, Hitachil, Pina, Ricardo, Dragonsteak, Katerina, Michael Bowen, Super Scaldi, Dog, Wyatt, and Wicked, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander Adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!